Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video we are going to be rehousing these big guys into this new enclosure. Um, I really love the giant Madagascar hissing cockroaches as pets. I don't use them as feeders. So I think they deserve a nice new enclosure. Now I have put mesh all along the top and down at the vents area here um, so that they shouldn't the babies shouldn't be able to escape there's mesh on the inside so it should stop them from getting through um, the substrate I'm using is cocoa fiber and orchid bark there's already some springtails gone in there's some butternut squash for them obviously loads of cork bark and i've used the background from an exoterra enclosure that houses our nandu trepepe as you know i made my own background for that so i've put the one that came with that enclosure into this enclosure basically i feel like the giant madagascar hissing roaches will actually eat through the background so there's no point making one especially for them so let's get these guys into their new home and I'm actually going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the giant Madagascar hissing cockroach and their care. Because, you know, I feel like they are a really good starter pet for people who want to keep inverts. But maybe like their parents don't want a tarantula or their partner. So I think these are a good option. You know, they're easy to take care of. They handle really well and are absolutely no danger to anyone. Cute as a button too. <laughs> um, so they live up to five years. I've had these guys about, I would say about a year and a half now, and I've had zero deaths. They're really easy to take care of. Given the name, they are native to the island of Madagascar. And if we're gonna talk about the name, giant is in there too, which means that they are fairly big. They don't have wings to fly, but they can climb glass very well. So make sure to close up any openings or the babies will definitely escape. I use petroleum jelly just around the outside of the glass. They can't climb on it. So they get as far as it and then they either fall off or turn around. And if you're wondering where the hissing sound comes from. Oh! It's caused when the hisser pushes air through a pair of spiracles on its back. Now, spiracles are tiny tubes insects use for breathing, and they actually hiss for a number of different reasons, like if they feel threatened or if the females want to attract a male. Males will actually hiss at each other as warnings. Sometimes I hear a few of them hissing together and just wonder, like, What's going on, guys? What's going on? It's also very easy to determine males from females. As you can see, they have different body shape, size and color. Also, the males have these like horn like bumps on their heads and females also have these, but the males are much bigger. And if you want to sex them at a younger age, then just look at their vents and you can clearly see the difference between the two. As far as diet goes, they can eat a variety of different fruit and veg. Mine absolutely love butternut squash. They can also have cuttlefish bone and that is to keep their shells healthy. However, if you're using these guys as feeders, I wouldn't really recommend the cuttle bone because if their shells are really hard, then a tarantula may actually have trouble and could probably break its fangs on its hard shell. They also eat protein. So like a good dog food is what I would use crushed up maybe once a week or so. And I don't offer a water dish, but I do keep it quite humid in there. And they also get a lot of their moisture from the fruit and veg that they eat. I feed them at night time. This is when they're active most. And if you're going to put food in in the morning, it's just going to dry out throughout the day and there won't be much moisture left in it in the evening for when these guys are going to actually start to eat. Oh. The ideal humidity is about 60 to 80 percent and in terms of temperatures 24 to 34 degrees celsius 
So for breeding, you would want it more in the 30s. I keep these guys at room temperature, so that's fine. As long as it doesn't go below 23, 24 degrees Celsius, you'll be a-okay. But if you do want to provide heat, just make sure that you also give them an option to go to the cooler end. So there's a light above my tank, which is where the most of the heat is, and that's where they go if they want heat. And then if they want to get out of the heat, they go into the shade so if you are giving them any added extra heat like with a heat mat make sure to only cover like a half or a third of the enclosure and as always with heat mats or any heat source please connect it to a thermostat for safety and if you're using lighting use it on a day night cycle they are nocturnal so they will prefer the dark so after breeding, the females store the fertilized eggs in, they're kind of like um, a cocoon shaped case in their bodies. And after about 60 days, they will give birth to dozens of live young nymphs. These nymphs then molt about six times before they reach adulthood. And this usually takes about six to seven months. And I think that's it in terms of their care. Um... But I would just like to add again that I think these little guys are great little pets for anybody who wanting to keep inverts. They're fun, they're active, easy to handle and completely safe. So yeah, get yourself a joint Madagascar hissing cockroach. <laughs> and with that said, that'll be all for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, comment something, subscribe and I shall see you all next time. Bye!